we'll do a little more, we we'll do an extra step to show multiple things between TP and Houdini. And basically what I will do is that instead of activating everything at once, all will be inactive and we will activate the spheres when they enter inside the mesh. Right, like a dynamic activation. Yes. So all right, Eloy. Eloy oh. needs to go to sleep soon, so the <laughs> clock is ticking. It's late, Goran. <laughs> Um, so we will first we will send all particles to an inactivate group, and this inactivate group can be in neutron. That's uh, why it's there. Ah, no, not even neutron. It can not, can be outside bullet. So we don't want this even out inside a bullet. So this will be inactive. Right now. It's not a proper workflow, but I'll close on that. Come on. So automatically, all particles we were. Um, Rename that, it's pointing to the same group, we don't have problems, all particles will go there. Outside bullet. And now we want that to activate these particles. These will be, can be spheres. Uh, so all go to inactive group, we see that they are there when you move, 500 particles there. If you want to visualize in which group they are, you can visualize the wireframe color. So right now, in no way. yeah, you don't know. You have this in the <laughs> I guess that. But well, uh, they are red. So and we can see that inactive are red. So we know that all these particles goes to inactive. And now if we scrap, um, they what's going on there? We have the force applied to the inactive. We need the force applied to the active and this also for the active so now now it's fine all are in an inactive and in inactive we don't have anything we don't have force and we don't have bullet but the bullet is still no because the bullet it's oh you only set it to active okay yes so we are only yeah bullet we have it on these ones these ones are outside everything mm -hmm. now let's activate this to activate that we can do it in multiple uh, ways. We will do it when they are inside a mesh. Mm -hmm. So let's create a geosphere there. We want that whenever it's inside this, it will get activated and we can animate that so they will get activated over time. No, no, no it's not possible that this crash. What happened with them? Is your mouse is still working? Uh, is the battery of your mouse? Is it? Yes, I guess, because there is no light. I don't think so. Well, it just stops moving at all. Yes. yes. Okay, some technical problems. It was the mouse, it's not max crashing. Uh, you, you get 10 it, seconds extra. It, yes, if we stop the video, it was not max crashing. <laughs> it was the mouse. Um, so, okay, now we animate that. And we have this. Selecting the aura spheres. So we want that our inactive particles goes to another group that are our spheres. So we want these particles going to these particles. Now it's happening always, but we want to do this only in a certain condition. And this condition will be when they are inside a mesh. We can expose this the on. So this only happens when this is true. And we need a note here. I have a question. Yes. Why do TP users always connect to particle when they grab random data? Like, why is it so difficult to just expose the position? What? Well, you connect what the position to particle. Yes. Uh, TP is very smart. I um, know, but like, uh, well, that's that just like when it comes to debugging, this is just makes things go super confusing. Well, I, I, I never liked that. Uh, you can do it as you want, Goran. I don't know, I'm just asking. Uh, to me, I like it because I don't need to output position. And it will exactly do the same if we connect this position to this position. That if TP, you're connecting um, but also, the input I to think a particle. That also confuses a lot of new users where, where they think, well, I want whatever attribute, whatever data type, and I just connect it to particle, and yeah. TP is just magically going to know what I want. I mean, position, it's fairly clear, but then there's other data that... I've seen people connect, like, a vector 
to particle and then they just expect the correct <laughs> data type to come through. Well, that's true. It only works with in certain cases. Right. So you don't need, you cannot do always that. Mm -hmm. But for position, particle it outputs an ID normally, but it will output position and I don't know if it works for velocity too. No, I think that is only for position that you can save output the position. Right. Well, okay. We Let's can keep going, going. Gordon. <laughs> okay. You can do as you want. Uh, it will work also connecting it on particle, but you're right. So, yeah, automatically. Maybe it's my OCD. Yeah. Okay. So now that's not working because we didn't select the node. And I expect this to work. So, as you can see now, if we hide the sphere, we hide the sphere and we hide this plane. As soon as something is inside the mesh, it's selected. Wow. Easy. We need four nodes to do that. So now we can see the same in Houdini. Sure. Okay. So back in Houdini, we want to activate spheres over time um, based on a in-mesh condition. So once we, we will have a controlling mesh that moves through the spheres and <clears throat> whenever a little sphere is inside the big sphere, it should get activated. So first we create our big sphere uh, and then remove it. Um, How do you create a key on Houdini? Um, you alt click the channel okay. and then it creates a green thing and then if you shift click it you get uh, the, the curve, curve right nice. away so now let's say 120 and now we move it over here and we all click it again and there you go and I can I can if I if I keep moving it it's changing the key value so whenever you are on the on the keyframe and you move something, it automatically changes it. Which mm -hmm. can be dangerous, but it's very convenient for animation. Um, okay, so now what we want to do is um, remember that we we wanted uh, we need um, create this attribute, right? So basically, we create another attribute wrangle. And we can say I am active equals um, zero. So now they're all static. And <clears throat> to do in mesh conditions in Houdini, it's easier to use a group because a group already has a um, in bounding regions where you can just say bounding object and now I can just um, tell all these spheres um, whenever they are inside you can see they're kind of shaded a little bit greenish mm -hmm. um, that means they're inside the group and now everything is inactive but whatever is uh, inside the sphere but we can say that group which they, is they send it to the group while they are in the sphere when the sphere pass they are outside the group or yeah no? yeah they get it's back like outside that. so we will have to compensate for that to make sure once they went into the group they never get back out of the group mm -hmm. but that's step by step so we're going to create a group called inside it's a point group because we're dealing with points here um, and Basically now we can say, well, this attribute wrangle, um, we put that onto the group inside and we set this to one. So now remember how we here we need to overwrite that attribute over time because it's changing over time. So we'll just use this guy and let's see what happens. As you can see, they fall down, but the moment you see how they kind of stop moving, ah, yeah. yeah, that is because they they kind of get out of that. 
Now, to do things over time inside Houdini, um, best is to quickly use a solver. So we just use a solver um, and just type that in and we say like this. And now, oh, wait. Mm, I don't think it was that easy. I think I have to test. <laughs> I think I have to test. Um, so I have to say, we can cut this. Hmm? We can cut this. No, let me just think. I didn't think it through. Um, so if, actually let's just see what, what's happening in the geometry spreadsheet right now. Yeah, they don't look that they get out. No? Right, they don't get out. Okay, so it was that easy. Um, but, you know. Right, they don't stop. Cool. Ah, so totally it's done. It's done. <laughs> so yeah. Um, that's about it. Ah, so it was way easier than I was thinking. Yeah, it's not that difficult. But I mean, it, it can get complicated if you have like other stuff, and um, it's it's just a workflow to get used to. Um, yeah, cool. It's, Houdini is not as you know bad as it sounds. It, it seems intimidating in the beginning, but then once you get used to it, it's pretty good. All right. Um, well, we hope you enjoyed this. Um, I think we'll keep keep doing some more like that. In Let the us future. know what you would like to see right. in Houdini TP. This was pretty basic. Uh, I think later on we're going to get a little bit more complex, but we have to kind of plan it out better. Um, yeah. yeah. Destruction, maybe more heavy destruction, or yeah, like maybe some fluids. Maybe fluids would be cool, but yeah, it's gonna get really complex really quick, I think. All right, well, uh, we're gonna have a beer now, right? Yes. Okay. Have a good night, guys. Good night.